In this tutorial, we will show you how to create geometrically correct, or involute, gear wheels, in Blender, that can be used in animation and 3D printing. But first, a bit of theory. A standard gear can be fully described with as few as two parameters, the number of teeth, usually denoted with the letter Z, and reference diameter, also known as pitch diameter, denoted with the letter D. The reference circle is the conceptual representation of a gear. Two mating gears are represented by two touching reference circles shown here in black dashed lines. An important gear measurement, called pitch, is the circular distance between two adjacent teeth as measured along the reference circle. Pitch is simply the circumference of the reference circle divided by the number of teeth. A more common gear measurement is called module, which is pitch divided by pi, or, in other words, the reference diameter divided by the number of teeth. Module is more convenient than pitch, because it is usually a rational number. For a system of two mating gears to function, their modules must be equal to each other. The distance between the gear centers is simply the average of the reference diameters. Most real-life gears use teeth that are curved in a certain way. The sides of each tooth are segments of the so-called involute curve. The involute curve is fully defined with a single parameter, the diameter of the base circle from which it emanates. The involute curve is defined parametrically with a pair of simple mathematical equations. The remarkable feature of an involute curve-based gear system is that it keeps the direction of pressure between mating teeth constant. This helps reduce vibration and noise in real-life gear systems. The angle between the pressure vector and a normal to the line connecting the gear centers is called pressure angle. The pressure angle is usually 20 degrees. We have developed an online gear calculator that instantly generates the equations for the involute curve, and other parameters, based on the module and number of teeth. These equations can be plugged into 3D modeling software, such as Blender, as will be demonstrated shortly. This online calculator can be found at www.otvinted.com slash gear.html. Let's outline the steps necessary to model a gear. Choose a module and number of teeth. Using the online gear calculator. Obtain the involute curve parameters and the angular tooth thickness. Using Blender's XYZ math surface add-on, create the curve. Duplicate the curve and create a mirror reflection relative to the x-axis. Rotate the bottom part relative to the center of the gear by the tooth thickness angle, obtained from the calculator. Connect the far ends of the two curves to form the tip of the tooth. Duplicate the tooth and rotate it relative to the center of the gear by the angle. Calculate it as 360 divided by the number of teeth. Bridge the two teeth with the semicircular arc. Duplicate the two teeth as many times as necessary until the entire gear outline is produced. Repeat these steps for the second gear. Offset the second gear by the distance calculated as the average of the two reference diameters. Let's start modeling. We will model two mating gears with 18 and 24 teeth. Both will have 1 mm modules. Let's model the 18 tooth gear first. In the gear calculator, enter 1 for module and 18 for the number of teeth and click calculate. We will use the generated equations momentarily. To draw an involute curve in Blender, we are going to use the XYZ math surface mesh. By default, this object is not enabled. To enable it, go to User Preferences, and in the Add-ons tab, check the box, Add Mesh, Extra Objects. 
delete the default cube by pressing X. In the bottom menu of the 3D view, select 3D cursor as the pivot point. On the numeric keypad, press 7 to switch to the top view, and 5 to switch to the orthographic mode. Add an XYZ math surface object by pressing Shift A. And selecting Mesh, Math Function, XYZ Math Surface. The default equations need to be replaced with the equations generated by the online gear calculator. The X and Y equations should simply be copied and pasted. Enter 0 for the Z equation. The U min value should remain 0, while the U max value should be copied from the calculator as it controls the length of the involute curve and therefore very important. The U step value can be set to 10. The U wrap checkbox must be unchecked. Since we are creating a two dimensional curve, the V parameter is not used. Enter zeros for V min and V max, and 1 for V step. Our curve should now appear in the 3D view. Press Tab to switch to the edit mode and click on the remove doubles button in the mesh tools menu. We will be using this button often. To create a mirror image of this curve reflected in the X axis, press Shift D to duplicate, then S to scale then Y, then minus 1. Then press Enter. This segment now needs to be rotated around the Z axis by the two thickness angle. According to the gear calculator, this angle is 11.7079. Press R for rotate, then Z, then 11.7079, then press Enter. Select the two far end vertices of the two curves and press F to create the tooth tip. Then press A twice to select everything. We need to create a second tooth, which is a copy of the first tooth rotated around the Z axis by 20 degrees, which is 360 divided by 18, the total number of teeth. Press Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, then Z, then 20. Then press Enter. Now, we need to bridge the two teeth with a semicircle. We will be using the spin tool for that. Select these two vertices, then press Shift S, and select cursor to select it. Deselect one of the vertices. Click on the spin button in the mesh tools menu. Enter 16 in the steps box and negative 180 in the angle box. Now press A to select everything and click on the remove doubles button. Press Shift C to return the 3D cursor back to the origin. The next step is not always required and can be skipped. The semicircular line connecting two adjacent teeth is sometimes not deep enough and may interfere with the teeth of the other gear. To elongate it, rotate the geometry so that it straddles the x-axis by pressing R. Switch to proportional editing by pressing O. Then select the center vertex and drag it slightly to the left by pressing G and X. Use the mouse wheel to adjust the size of the affected area to make sure that only the vertices on the semicircle are affected but not the vertices forming the teeth themselves. Then press O. To exit proportional editing. Let's duplicate the two teeth until the entire gear outline is complete. Press A to select everything, Shift D to duplicate, then R to rotate, then Z, then 20, then enter. Press A twice to select everything, then Shift D then R, then Z, then 40, then Enter. Repeat this as many times as necessary. Select everything by pressing A, then click on the Remove Doubles button to get rid of many extra vertices created by the series of duplications. Our gear outline is ready. In the remaining part of the tutorial, we will turn the outline into a 3D object, add a 24 tooth gear, and animate the two mating gears using drivers. Let's give this outline some depth. But first, let's rename the object. In the outliner window, left click on the name XYZ function while holding the control key, and enter gear 18. Our gear will be 6 mm thick. Extrude it along the Z axis by pressing E for extrude, then Z, 
then 6, then enter. To put the 3D cursor in the center of the top layer, press Shift S, then cursor to selected. Press 7 on the numeric pad to switch back to the top view. Press A, to deselect everything, and zoom in on a tooth. Using the box tool, select most vertices on both sides of the tooth symmetrically. Press F to create a face, covering the tooth. Switch to the face select mode and replicate this face by pressing Shift D to duplicate, then R to rotate, then Z, then 20, then enter. Repeat until every tooth has a face covering it. Press A to deselect everything. These faces have to be created at the bottom side of the gear as well. Select one of the faces. To select all of them, press Shift G, then select area from the pop-up menu. Press Shift D to duplicate, then Z, then minus 6, then enter. Press A twice to select everything, then click on the remove doubles button. Switch back to the vertex select mode. Press A to deselect everything. Then select the newly created inner rim by right clicking on any of its edges while holding down the ALT key. In the information window at the top of the screen, note the number of vertices selected. Then create a circle with a radius of 4 and the same number of vertices. While holding down the SHIFT and ALT keys, select the inner rim. Then press W and select bridge edge loop. Extrude the circle along the z-axis downwards by 6 mm and bridge it with the bottom inner rim. Press A, twice, to select everything, then press Ctrl N, to make the normals consistent. Press A to deselect everything. For a more realistic look, the tooth tips need to be beveled. Switch to the edge select mode and select one of the tooth tip edges. Press Shift G and select length from the pop-up menu to select all of them. Press Ctrl B to use the bevel tool. In the amount box, enter 0.6, and in the segments box, 10. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. Set smooth shading for the gear. To fix the shading problem, add the edge split modifier. Our gear is now complete. We will quickly repeat this procedure for our second 24 tooth wheel. To avoid clutter, we will create the second wheel in the second layer. We will enter 1 for module and 24 for the number of teeth in the gear calculator. This time we will skip the bridge elongation step. Once the wheel is ready, we will move it to the first layer and move it along the x-axis by 21 mm which is the average of the 18mm and 24mm reference diameters.
In the final part of the tutorial, we will show you how to animate the two gears, using drivers. First, let's rotate the smaller gear until the teeth of both gears mesh nicely. For a more accurate alignment, zoom in, and switch to the wireframe mode by pressing Z. Press R, then Z, then visually adjust the wheel's rotation with the mouse. Press Z again to exit the wireframe mode. Now press Ctrl A and select Apply Rotation. The smaller, 18 tooth wheel will be the drive gear, and the larger, 24 tooth wheel, the driven gear. Select the larger gear and go to the Object tab. Under Rotation, right click on the Z box and select Add Single Driver. The Z box should turn magenta. Open a new window by dragging the split window widget of the 3D view downwards. Change the window type of the new window to Graph Editor. Change Editing Context to Drivers. In the left side area, click on Z Euler Rotation. Press N to view the Properties region. Scroll down to the Drivers section. If you see the red X icon and a message, Error, Python Auto Execution Disabled, Go to User Preferences, select the File tab and check the box, Auto Run Python Scripts. In the Object Bone box, select Gear 18, and in the Type drop-down box, Z Rotation. Scroll up a little. In the Expression box located right under the drop-down box that says Scripted Expression, enter the mathematical expression describing the rotation angle of the larger gear relative to the rotation angle of the smaller gear. In our case, it is negative r, times 18, divided by 24. The var variable contains the driver value, which in our case is the rotation angle of the drive gear. The negative sign signifies that the second gear is rotated in the opposite direction of the first gear. The 18 divided by 24 factor, or 0.75, is the gear ratio calculated by dividing the number of teeth of the drive gear by the number of teeth of the driven gear. Now, let's test our gear system. Select the drive gear, press R for rotate, then Z, then move the mouse, back and forth to make sure the driven gear is rotated correctly relative to the drive gear. Then press escape. We can now keyframe the rotation of the drive gear to animate our system. In the Timeline window, make sure the current frame is 1. In the Object tab, hover the mouse over the rotation box for the drive gear and press I. The box should turn yellow. Switch to frame 250 by pressing the Fast Forward button. In the Rotation box, enter a large number for the Z rotation such as 500. Then press I, while hovering the mouse over the box. Our animation is now ready to be played. And that concludes this tutorial.